Let's take a look at tonight's lineup. In freestyle action at 121 pounds, Moore and Strip Matter, Greco-Roman 121 pounds, Paulson and Durlocker, 132 pounds, Gruenwald and Naradka, 145 pounds, Bracken and Cooper. In freestyle, Joe Williams against Casey Cunningham at 163 pounds, Sanderson and Fulhart at 185 pounds, and our last match, 264 pounds, they're the heavyweights, McCoy and Thompson. We're at 121 pounds here at the U.S. National Wrestling Championships. You see Jody Stritmatter in the blue going up against Teague Moore. You'll see him in the red. He leads, that's Teague Moore there, he leads 2-1. to one. Moore uh, came out and scored first with a takedown, and then Stritmatter came back, scored a takedown of his own. Uh, a reversal for Teague Moore after that made the score 2-1, to one, and that's where we stand right now. Right off the bat, Teague Moore shoots in low on Strip Matter's leg. Now he's got to finish. Kendall, what's he got to do here? Well, I think he's, he's, he's certainly got to build up, and he's doing just that. He uh, wants to go in a crackdown position where he sets the Strip Matter's hip to, his, to the mat and then try to finish on the other side. Looks Ooh. like he's going to get stopped. Chelsea, Michael Leitner in the corner. Moore's doing a great job of... Uh, really uh, countering or, or neutralizing Strip Matter's shots to that single leg. Although he is in deep now, he's able to keep him from being able to score here with that limber leg, just kind of limber legs out. That's how Moore scored his first point. From this position, he slipped his leg out and then spun around behind Strip Matter. Now Strip Matter won't make that mistake, but before he can turn around, before he can take a breath, it's Teague Moore back in on his leg. It's scoring now the mandatory three points. Three points for uh, Teague Moore in the red over Jody Stripmatter in the blue. Teague Moore is very much in a workmanlike mode right now. He's acting almost like a businessman out there. He, he did his first period in a way that gave him a lot of information, and now he's kind of going about the second period with his own plan. Jim Zaleski, the head coach of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Yeah, Moore's really starting to gel as an international wrestler. He's had a lot of success of late. In fact, although Stripmatter beat Henson, uh, world champion, Olympic silver medalist earlier in this tournament. So has Moore. Moore has defeated uh, Henson before, and so they're, these, both of these gentlemen, they are in a class there where they can compete at the world level. So to a large extent, we're watching a very evenly, uh, even matched contest. I think so. And again, you're going to see uh, Moore drop that leg out. And to the referee, it certainly looks bad and uh, will, will cause a situation where he may just cause a stalemate or potentially dangerous position there just to protect the knee which kind of works in his favor. Oh, that went to the back, guys. Exposure to the back adds a little bit of spice and points to the match. 5-1 now in favor of Teague Moore. I think Teague's just a little too physical for Strip Matter at this point. You know, Strip Matter, again, he's young. He's, he's just getting out of college. He's, he's going to have a great future, but I believe right now Teague Moore is, uh, is certainly much too physical for, for Strip Matter at this point. Teague Moore cut his teeth, so to speak, in Pennsylvania. That's where he grew up, but then he went to your old alma mater, Oklahoma State, and uh, had a lot of success down there. NCAA champion. Fabulous career at Oklahoma State. Oh, inside trip! The technique involved there, and the rhythm and the timing was beautiful. Teague Moore's got a bag of tricks. He, he has a lot of, does a lot of neat things. He's, he's wide open. He's not really uh, locked in or centered into one particular style. He, he can, do many things good. He's very adaptable. He responds to the situation at hand, whatever that may be. Six to one in favor of Teague Moore. I sometimes like to draw an analogy to other martial arts. He looked like Bruce Lee when he hit that inside trip there. Yes, fantastic. I'm in awe of, the, of, of an athlete that can put that kind of technique together. Not having a lot of success turning uh, strip matter shoulders to the mat here in the parterre position. The strip matter, he's got such length, it's going to be hard to turn him, no matter who's on top of him. He just spreads out. It's just really, it's, it's, it's going to be difficult to turn somebody like strip matter. 19 seconds left. Tig Moore in a comfortable lead here. He's just kind of wandering around now, waiting for the seconds to tick off the clock. Jody strip matter, maybe trying to gain a little confidence for a matchup that is certain to come again later on down the line. And it looks like Tig Moore, though. He's going to be your national champion here at 121 pounds. He's only 11 seconds away. Neutral, gentlemen. This is a good win for Teague Moore. You know, he's knocking on the door. He's been right there 
trying to make this U.S. team, and uh, we're two years away from the next Olympics in Athens, and he's, uh, he's really positioning himself to be one of the guys that can make this team. And as they're putting an exclamation point on the final match, final second here, Digmore scores one more point, 7-2. to Jim Zaleski, the coach for Scrib Matter, a little bit uh, looking at what he can do to help his athlete come back next time. Of course, uh, Joe C. and Michael Leitner over in the corner for Tigmore. Pretty happy about the way things turned out. 7-1 to one in favor of Tigmore. Here he is right here, dropping to the hip in the single. Drives him to his back, picks up the back points. That's a nice move by Tigmore. Again here. Nice inside trip. Sets him to his hip. And Tigmore, real happy with that win, 121 pounds. That's our first match. We've got a lot more coming. Stay with us. We'll be back. Brandon Paulson, the silver medalist from the Olympic Games in 1996 and a world medalist in the World Games just a few months ago, going up against Lindsay Durlocker, wrestling for the Wildcat Wrestling Club in the blue. It's the second period. There's been no scoring. So now we go to the clinch. And Kendall, take it away. What are we going to see? Well, this is going to be interesting. The first per one of them uh, wins the coin toss, gets to choose to uh, lock first, and the other wrestler has to lock against his opponent. So right now, it's a real strategy to get the lock, and you see them jockeying for position. Ooh, one more uh, warning, and there'll be a point awarded to Paulson. Uh-oh, here we go. Here we go. Let's see how this goes. This is great stuff right here. In the clinch. They're really kind of feeling each other out. Not sure exactly what to do here. Well, they've got Don't one minute to have something happen. If uh, who, uh, Let's see, who locked first? Uh, whoever did lock first has to score or has to do something in, the, in one minute or the referees will award a point to the other competitor. So there's so much incentive to have action here, especially in the last few seconds of that minute. It's kind of interesting. They're not really doing a lot just yet. Kind of getting a feel for, uh, for the opponent. I really feel that somebody's going to have to go here. They're 20 seconds away from that one-minute time period. Oh, it was Durlocker that uh, went for the headlock, perhaps lost his composure first. So Paulson uh, scores the one-point takedown. Well, Paulson knew where he was in the bout. He glanced over at the clock, knew there was 22 seconds left to go before Durlocker had to do something. So Paulson was very patient, and he actually helped make that happen. Yeah, you're exactly right, man. He's a, he's a smart wrestler. Now the lift! That's what you're looking for in Greco-Roman wrestling. Paulson began to get Durlocker's hips up where uh, his back could be easily exposed. Uh, he gets one point for doing that. In fact, it's very difficult to get your opponent's hips that high in the air. So now the score, 2-0 in favor of Brandon Paulson, the silver medalist from the 96 games. And although Durlocker's back did not expose to the mat, Paulson picks up a point for, a, I guess you could call it maybe an appreciation point for getting the lift and getting it done, lifting his opponent above his head and um, taking him off the mat. That's exactly what it is, an appreciation point. And the officials want to get the wrestlers to attempt moves. And so when they attempt moves like that, they're going to recognize it. Well, exactly right. A great example you just saw of uh, Brandon Paulson attempting a move, and it didn't work exactly the way he wanted to, so he wasn't penalized. That's right. Although Durlocker ended up on top, he's not, Paulson's not going to be penalized for taking that chance. So they're not going to give Durlocker a point for reversing. You know, I really like the composure I've seen in Brandon Paulson. We talked about his technical superiorities and the way he's come through these brackets. But in this particular bout, it's not a technical superiority type decision, but he has maintained his composure straight throughout from the opening whistle. Not easy to do when uh, you've been pushed into oxygen dead and... You know, the stress of the moment is always uh, weighing heavily. I tell you, I was really impressed with Paulson back in 96 when he wrestled in the Olympic Games in Atlanta. Uh, still a college athlete, still had eligibility in college, making the Olympic team, which is actually, that's pretty rare. It's very rare for an athlete to make the U.S. team as a, as a collegian. Goes out and takes a silver medal in the Olympics. Fantastic wrestler, fantastic ability. And Durlocker with an action on the edge of the mat does not score now. Paulson on top looking for some way to score on him. Open. And the lift. He's got his hips underneath. He's on the edge. And he lifts him over to the top. Looks like he's going to pick up a three points for the throw there. 
Kick him to his back, expose his back off the mat, from the lift. It doesn't get a lot better than that. Sometimes you got to wait a few minutes to see an action like that, but it really makes it all worthwhile, and the anticipation is fantastic. Brandon Paulson lifts Durlocker way up in the air, flips him over, exposes his back, now leads 6 to 0. 22 seconds left in the bout. And now okay, he's going for more. Reverse body lift. Now Durlocker counters this time. Not much time left. No, Durlocker's not going to have a chance to make up any points here. He's just... Paulson is way too composed to give up too many points here at the end of the match, and that's exactly what happens. Great Greco-Roman competition. Brandon Paulson, the national champion at, here in Las Vegas in the year 2002. Good job, now you, you'll see uh, Paulson and Durlocker in the clinch. Here we are. In the jockey position. Durlocker takes the chance, slips the head off, headlock, and Paulson picks up the point. Here's the big throw. Right over the top, back exposed. Brandon Paulson pulls it out. Uh, he's the big winner. We'll be back with more wrestling action. Jim Grunewald up against Glenn Naratka at 132 pounds. Right after this, stay with us. kilos in the Greco-Roman competition. As we head into the second period, Jim Grunewald holds a 2-1 lead over Glenn Narodka. Narodka got his point on an attempted throw. The referees gave him an appreciation point for that, but Grunewald trapped Narodka's arm. He scored a two-point gut wrench. You know, the winner of this national championship has such a big advantage. Uh, the world team trials in June in St. Paul, Minnesota. Everybody that's that enjoys wrestling has got to get out there because uh, if you are the winner of the U.S. National Championships, you get to sit aside and wait for everybody else to go through a tournament to determine who's going to face you in the finals to make the world team. Yeah, that's exactly right, Larry. It is such a, a bonus to be able, it's such an advantage to be able to win this tournament and set yourself up for a guaranteed two out of three wrestle-off for the U.S. team. Sean Lewis, the coach for the U.S. Army. Contact. Pretty good wrestler in the Greco-Roman division himself. Let's see if Nar Naraka can pick up some points here. This is this Got is it. where you win matches in, on top and bottom, in parterre position. If you can score here, you're going to win matches. Well, notice he can't use the legs. He can't attack the legs. He can't use his legs to attack his opponent either. It's all got to be a lock around the waist and a lift. Greenwald is a very stellar performer. He's a performer on his feet, but he's also a performer in the parterre position. Built himself a good base and would not allow himself to be turned on that before the referee had to bring him both back to the standing position. Well, you know, you've got to score three points in a match here to win. And right now, it's, uh, it's Grunewald with two points and Naradka with one. So at the end here, we may be going to that clinch again. We very well could see it. And now something is going to happen. They're coming to the center. There is Glenn Naradka in the blue. We're at 132 pounds in the Greco-Roman division. That's Jim Grunewald. We're in the overtime. It's two to one. You got it. You got to score three points to uh, win. And take lock red, blue lock. So we're in the clinch. Their hands are locked. They can't unlock them. Unfortunately, uh, they say Grunewald did unlock. He can afford to do that though, because that gives one point to Naradka. Ties it up, two to two. Neither of them have the three points necessary to win. It's sudden death from this point on, though, guys. First person to score wins this match. See if Naraka oh. can get it. And oh, he big, does! Big upset in the Greco Roman. Oh, game. wow. What a great upset. That was a fabulous turn there. Gets Grunewald to his back. Narak has got to be happy about that. That's oh. a nice win for him. The national champion, Glenn Naraka. First he takes Dennis Hall out, the uh, world champion and Olympic medalist, and now he takes out the 2000 Olympian, Jim Grunewald, in the overtime period. It's really good to see the parity in these weight classes. You know, we not only have, a, a, we have a, an Olympic silver medalist and a world champion that's sitting out because he didn't make it to finals. This is, a gr this is great for this, this weight class. There's the exposure. You see Narodka do the gut wrench. He exposed Grunewald's back to the mat. He knew immediately that the sudden death turned me, uh, that was a sudden death score, and then he had one. Let's take a look at it again. Grunewald trying to fight it, just can't do it. 
exposes his back for the two. The racket wins that match. Van Stokes is with our winner. You were put in the top position. What went through your mind then? I, I knew I had to score pretty quick because I was getting pretty winded. He pushes real hard, so uh, I wanted to score then, get it over with. Well, score you did in a very big way, and you come out national champion. Congratulations, Glenn Naratka. Thank you very much. Go Army. Glenn Naratka, your champion at 132 pounds. He is your national champion. We'll be back with more action from the Las Vegas Convention Center right after this. Stay with us. Blue, and you'll see how Kevin Bracken gained his 3-0 lead right here. Yeah, he does a nice job of timing it perfectly when Cooper wanted to come up. Just popped it through, took him to his back. That was a really nice move. He is so versatile and so talented. Good luck. Times it perfectly. Cooper wants to come up. He wants to raise his head up. Bracken takes advantage of it. So Bracken has the three points necessary to win in regulation. It's Cooper's job to come back here. Kevin Bracken, uh, a product of the uh, training center in Colorado Springs. Marcel Cooper, uh, wrestling for the United States Marines. You got a couple of tough guys out there. Kevin Bracken was on our world team and our Olympic team. And uh, Marcel Cooper on uh, our world team. Uh, and they're a victim of the consolidation of weight classes, man. Here's a good example of what you talked about in our open. Very, very much so. Kevin Bracken seems to have found a home, while Cooper really has to struggle sometimes to make the weight and then put himself in the ready condition so he can wrestle. So this is a class example of those adjustments that we talked about at the top of the show. Now, this is a very difficult thing, going from eight classes to seven classes. Uh, it really, especially in those middle weights where most of the, you know, our, lar our biggest pool of talent lies within those middle weights. And so to consolidate them is really just puts these guys at a, at a, a, a daunting task just to make the U.S. team. Get a good look at Greg Gibson, legendary wrestler in his own right, and also still a member of the United States Marine Corps. He and Jay Antonelli are the coaches of Marcel Cooper. And it's Cooper now with the opportunity to pull closer to Kevin Brack, and he's got to lift him, expose his shoulders to the mat. This is where Cooper should, he's got to have some points here. This is big. When you get on top in Greco, it's just almost essential that you get some points from it. It's tough not to win if you can throw like that. Come on, Cooper! Come on, Bracken! And Kevin Bracken really showing uh, some poise and class here. He's got those three points, and they're looming real large now with a minute and 30 seconds left in the second period. An attempted duck by Cooper. He loses his balance, and Bracken chases him out of bounds, and I think we may have a little cut on the forehead of Kevin Bracken. And the trainers are called out. They're going to make sure that they stop that bleeding before they go any further. That's called Kevin No Slack Bracken. He had Cooper on the run, but you would think he might let up. No, not <laughs> Kevin Bracken. He was in pursuit. Yeah, it's, uh, nobody claimed that this was a, a gentle sport. And now back to the wrestling action. Kevin Bracken standing in the center of the ring. Marcel Cooper trying to push him out, trying to gain the kind of position he needs. Down to one minute. Bracken seems to be in control of this match here. He's, uh, you know, he picked up a nice three-point move to go ahead, and now he's in a position where he really doesn't have to take any big risks, and he can win this match because of that. Yeah, it'd be nice if Kevin would give... You know, give up a few points and make it a little more exciting, but I don't think we can expect uh, Kevin Bracken to be doing that. No, and, and he doesn't have to at this point. He's out there to gain a victory, and you know, he is a complete wrestler. When you look at wrestlers, and Greco-Roman wrestlers in particular, Kevin Bracken's just about as complete as you can get. That's right. He's a complete wrestler. Chris Saban, Momar. So he gave there in the corner. Cooper a point here. I'm not really sure what happened there. Was it maybe a slap to the, to the head? Not really sure what they did there. They, they gave Cooper a point and put Bracken down. Bracken comes right back out. And they award him an escape point. Did he get, did he get confirmation for the escape point there? I believe he did. That's the other way you can score points when you're on the bottom. If you can't escape, they will uh, sometimes, if you earned it, give you the point. Now it's 4-1 Bracken. 21 seconds left. I don't think Kevin Bracken could have scripted this a whole lot better. No, he did a nice job. Not, not any mistakes. You know, very, you really, if you cut down on your mistakes, there's a good chance you're going to win. If, you, if your opponent can't get on the board, you're, there's a real good chance you're going to win the match. 
And Cooper concedes the fact that uh, this match is over. One second left. And these two train together all the time. They will face each other, I'm sure, quite possibly in the World Team Trials in St. Paul, Minnesota in June. You don't want to miss that. We'll be back with more wrestling action. We're shifting to freestyle next. Joe Williams and Casey Cunningham at 163 pounds. Stay with us. Joe Williams, one of the dominant wrestlers in the world, coached by, by Tom Branch. Here's how he scored his first technique to score. Double leg. Knocks Casey Cunningham right back. And he's so fast, the camera couldn't stay with him. <laughs> he is lightning. Make no mistake about that. He might be the best athlete possibly in this entire competition. He, certainly. And you know, I'll tell you what, he, uh, I really consider him one of the best in the world. I think he's, he's, right now he's knocking on the door. He's a bronze medalist in last year's world championships. He, I, I could see him winning a couple. I could see him winning a couple world titles, perhaps, and hopefully an Olympic title if he's the man here at this weight class. Well, it's competitors Casey Cunningham in the blue. And he's had a great tournament to get here. He's pulled some great upsets off, but if you were to beat Joe Williams, you'd have to say that's the upset of the year. Uh, Joe Williams now scoring another point, 5-0, and following it up. And I think we can all agree here, guys, that <laughs> the gut wrench, the parkour wrestling that we're seeing from Joe Williams is something that he's really made an improvement on. He certainly has. I'm not sure he could improve his wrestling on his feet, but well, down there on the parkour... Looks great to me. A lot of times coming out of the collegiate style and then coming into the international freestyle, working in that parterre position is where a lot of guys are going to gain significant improvements. And Joe Williams, he's brought it up to the same level now of his wrestling on his feet, which is at a superb level. Well, that's great news for the United States and USA Wrestling. It is because, you know, these, a lot of these athletes, they wrestle through their college careers in a different style, which is collegiate style, only done here in the States. And so it puts them at a disadvantage when it comes to wrestling at the Worlds because they don't have the experience on top and parterre in freestyle. So it kind of puts them at a disadvantage. So it's good to see Williams picking up and really improving on his top wrestling. Yeah, and there you just saw a subtle a clue that Joe Williams had there. If he could crush uh, Casey Cunningham's arm down and tip him up, that he could expose his back, and he did it. Uh, those are the kind of things that I'm not sure Joe Williams would have been able to pick up a year ago, but now he's making them look real easy. That's one thing about international freestyle wrestling is uh, you can score so quick. It just, uh, it just like you see there, you know, Williams just tipping him, just, oh. high, just a bit, picking up two points. Easy to get points on the board just by a little tip. And now Cunningham in on the legs of Joe Williams, but not for very long. The power of Joe Williams in his hips and legs, he just pulls them right back. They're his. I think, Larry, when you combine the quickness that he has, that athleticism we've talked about, and then you add that extra ingredient, power, we're talking about a skill set that's tough to beat. Yeah, he's, he's a complete package. He's got, he's got all the tools. All the tools. A minute and 35 seconds left in the second and final period. Williams in the lead. Cunningham, he's scored one point. And uh, now he's on top with his opportunity to score more. Let's take a look at his offense and Joe Williams' parterre tier defense. One of the things Kevin Jackson, our national team coach, says that the whole team needs to work on. I tell you what, this is an FYI here. Cunningham is a tough wrestler. It's 8-1 right now. It looks like he's getting blown out of this match, but Cunningham is, 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 is he could, you know, if, if it wasn't Williams here, if it was Cunningham's job to go out and wrestle in the world, he would do fine. It's just that Williams is that good. A bronze medalist from the World Games not long ago, just a few months ago. And uh, actually a 5-4 loss to the uh, Bovisa Satiev, who is considered to be, if not the greatest wrestler wrestling right now. Uh, he's certainly in the top two or three, and Williams had him on the ropes. We are. We're going to see a lot of both these wrestlers, I think, Larry. It's interesting to note that Cunningham came through this entire tournament with four technical superiority. So he's got a tough one here, but throughout he's shown very, very well in this, in this rigorous tournament. He has. He has. He's a good wrestler. And, uh, you know, 9-1, to one, that just shows you what kind of wrestler Joe Williams is. You know, he's just really taken this, this weight class apart. Well, he is, and uh, he's taken the crowd out of it. Anybody that wanted Casey Cunningham to, to mount a comeback, is uh, they're, they're quiet because Joe's been so dominant. 9-1 to one in favor of Joe Williams. 30 seconds left. You know, it's a respectful crowd, I think, Larry. When this bout ends, you're going to hear a very generous round of applause. It's an appreciation from a, from a crowd that really respects what Joe Williams brings to this sport and to this match. Absolutely. 
And the time is ticking away. 19 seconds left. You know, Casey Cunningham, uh, Kendall, like you said, uh, he, he is a competitor. And look at him. Right to the end, he's fighting for any point that he can get. Yeah, he wants to feel, he wants to go out at least feeling good. Pick up a point here. Uh, at least let himself know that he can score on Williams and, uh, and try to look into the future. And it's not to be there at the end. Nine to one. Joe Williams, workmanlike uh, victory. Joe Williams picks up a national championship at 163 pounds in freestyle. We'll be back with perhaps the biggest name in the sport. Kale Sanderson comes up next at 185 pounds. You're not going to want to miss that. Championships, it's freestyle competition now, and we really have our marquee matchup right here. Kale Sanderson, wrestling for the Sunkiss Kids, just now won a fourth straight NCAA title for Iowa State. Going up against Lee Fullhart, he was a national champion for uh, Iowa. These guys have gone round and round. Uh, Kale Sanderson never losing a match in college gets a lot of the talk and really he, he, he appears to be invincible but Lee Fullhart in freestyle competitions had success against Kale Sanderson so I'm really looking forward to this one Kendall. Yeah this should be good I, uh, I would think that the, the, uh, the Fullhart camp has certainly tried to build a strategy based on what Sanderson does and I'll tell you what he's going to be tough to beat. Sanderson just, uh, just keeps moving, keeps going, never quits. You see him in there on a leg just makes it look easy. He's in on the leg of full heart. Now, it's not easy to finish a leg attack on a quality athlete like Lee Fullhart. It is really, really difficult. And Kale Sanderson just made it look relatively easy. He scores one point in the first 20 seconds of the match. Yeah, it's almost like he, he uh, makes it his job to make it look easy. Just, uh, <laughs> just it makes it look effortless. But it's certainly a lot of effort exerted there. He just makes it look easy. Bobby Douglas on the left and and Cody Sanderson, Kale's brother on the right. Another family affair here. Bobby Douglas, the uh, venerate, uh, venerable uh, wrestling coach from Iowa State, uh, first a great, great, great wrestler, and now a, also an NCAA champion coach in the corner of Kale Sanderson. Kale's had his family there all along, you know, and now that he's done with his collegiate career, that family will be continue to be right behind him. You know, Van, speaking of family, uh, USA Wrestling has a partner member. For those people out there, and I know there's thousands of them that they want to be a part of USA Wrestling, the national governing body for the sport, hey, go to themat.com, www.themat.com. You can become a partner member. You get our publication. You get a lot of great stuff. Uh, hear me. Hear what I'm saying. It's a great deal. And, it, and, the, and the nice thing is you really become a member of this wrestling family by so doing. So... Yes, I would highly encourage it. In fact, I got mine uh, just a couple of months ago. Hey, Fullhart looking good, driving Sanderson out of bounds there. Look at that guy. I mean, you know, you know he's ready. He's driven. He's focused. He's mean. He's tough. Now Sanderson in deep, though, and he's got him on his hip. He doesn't stop. Kendall, you had spoke about the fact that he never stops, and it's a great advantage. Yeah, it really is something. It seems like he doesn't have... He doesn't have a problem adjusting in any position at all. He's familiar with every position, regardless of whether it's a scramble or a, just a clear, clear-cut clear technique. He did, he's familiar with every position. So now it's 3-0 the favor, in the favor of Kale Sanderson. And uh, I'm going to put you on the spot, Kendall. What's Sanderson's weakness? People all over the country are wondering. You know, you're, you're our expert commentator. <laughs> Go ahead. What is his weakness? I tell you what, if he has a weakness, he's doing a great job of hiding. <laughs> <laughs> he has not exposed it yet. <laughs> yeah, you're taking a good look at Kale Sanderson, uh, certainly the biggest name in uh, this tournament. And they're, they're, you know, using the videotape replay again here. Bill Steckline, Rick Tucci, Jim Ravenack, uh, USA Wrestling Man of the Year there on your left. Let's go, Jim. You know, maybe his weakness is the uh, videotape machine. They, they went and reviewed that action and took one point away from the total. So he's back to 2-0. And now full hard in on Sanderson. Because we can't see his weaknesses, that's what makes his matches so riveting. And they have been riveting straight throughout this competition. And look at the body awareness of Sanderson. He floated above, above full heart there and uh, ended up in a position where he scores his third point. 
the mandatory third point to win in regulation. We still have 32 seconds left in the first period. I don't want this one to end. Most, most people with don't, Larry. They, they want to watch it. They just hands. enjoy watching Kale Sampson work. With your hands. He, he gets maximum effect with minimum means. He's very efficient in what he does out there. He's almost a work of art. Well, well, well said. That, you know, that really describes him uh, to a T. And what a great ambassador for the sport. I mean, it's obvious that, that he's uh, so technically oriented and focused, but... I don't, you know, you couldn't say a bad thing about the guy. He's a fantastic artist off the mat, a musician, an artist. Uh, you know, both of these guys, Full Hard, he's a, he's, a, he's a grinder. He's done great things in the sport. You know, it's just, uh, it's almost unfortunate that uh, Full Hard's in a, in, a, in a weight class where we have a dynasty being built here. And there you see Kale going to his corner to get some advice from Bobby, Douglas, and Cody. Watch this how he just slips his hips over the top of his head here. Really nice. This is the ad lib part where Sanderson's just fantastic. Right there, slips his hips over, cups the leg with his heels, and he wins. Oh, he makes that look easy. <laughs> and that's why his matches are so riveting, just because of the way he goes about his work out there. Yeah, it's not necessarily cut and dry technique. It's, it's almost a, an unorthodox style. And now freestyle action. The second period... Here at 185 pounds, Kale Sanderson in the red, the dominant wrestler of the uh, day, going up against Lee Fullhart, you know, who's really had great success against Sanderson in freestyle competition. Not well, so far today. Fullhart came out of a very difficult semifinal match. We watch him go Double, against Aaron, uh, Aaron Simpson, and he won that bout three to one, but he expended a lot of energy, and that bout could have gone either way when it came right down to the wire. So he might have come into this perhaps just a little bit tougher. You know, yeah. there's Sanderson in on the leg, and he's attempting to finish, and, boy, I thought I saw John Smith out there for a second, and I'm obviously speaking figuratively, but he was in low on the leg, and then he started that series of finishes. You know, you're going to see John Smith had su put such a, a, a print on USA Wrestling. Uh, you're going to see a lot of John Smith and a lot of our up-and-coming athletes. He, everybody watched him. He was the man. And uh, so you're going to see that. You're going to see a lot of John Smith and some of these guys that are up and coming. Sure, and he'll be compared to Kale Sanderson. Or Kale, of course, will be compared to him. John Smith winning two straight Olympic and four straight world championships. And look at the, uh, you, you just can't move the right way out there because either way you move, Sanderson's there to take advantage of it. Now 4-0 uh, in favor of Kale Sanderson in the red. Pitching a shutout so far. Minute 54 left in the second period. What do you think is going through Lee Fuller's mind as he looks up at the clock from the down position before they come to standing position? I tell you, I think he's frustrated. This has got to be a this has got to be a daunting task for him. He knows that you know Sanderson. He's just getting started. He's just a kid. He's going to be doing some great things, and and Fuller's going to have to contend with that. You know, it'll be interesting to see. You know, some of these guys, some guys will be able to rise to the level and perhaps compete with Sanderson and maybe for the spot. But I'll tell you what, it's it's not happening anytime soon. You know, we've talked about uh, Sanderson. It's hard not to talk about him. He took, uh, he took Charles Burton, our Olympian, from the year 2000, just right around the corner, beat him 11-0 in the semifinal. In two minutes and 17 seconds. Yeah. yeah, the 2000 Olympian didn't even make it out of the first period with this guy. You know, sometimes we have to be real careful that we don't oversell an athlete and perhaps even dramatize. But, you know, some of the things we're saying just even might be understatements. <laughs> That's true. And I don't think, you, you know, I'll go out on a limb and say we're not, we're not, over, we're not understating his uh, off the mat persona as well. That's correct. Every, you know, what you see is what you get. Great guy. Very talented off the mat as an artist and uh, as a student, as a person, probably mostly as a person. Now, Ford has a little position here. 44 seconds left. He may, he may score some points here. He's halfway around behind Sanderson. He's either going to get all the way around behind him or lift his hips and expose his back. Neither happens, though. So the shutout is still being pitched by Cale Sanderson. Look for your and, you know, Sanderson has actually worked up a sweat in this bout, something he has not done in all the other bouts that he's participated in. That's right. Hey. In the semifinal match against 
the, uh, the 2000 Olympian. I don't think he messed up his hair. <laughs> now he's in again here on Lee Fullhard looking for his fifth point. If he exposes Fullhart's back to the mat in the process of doing so, of course, he'll be awarded more points. Doesn't, doesn't succeed that time. Quick whistle by the referee. <laughs> no. There's a good look at Kale. We're coming down to the end of the match. Kale Sanderson, 4-0. Dominating performance. Uh, Full heart looked good at times. Had a few threatening positions, but Kale Sanderson really never really threatened. Cody Sanderson, his brother on the right, Bobby Douglas on the left, happy with the way things turned out. We'll be seeing Kale Sanderson wrestling high-level competition for quite a while. He is your 2002 U.S. National Wrestling Champion, representing the Sunkiss Kids. Right here you see Sanderson in on a shot, drops into his hip, he picks up the points. Down low on the legs, you gotta love it. Certainly the Iowa State group right there, love it. The hand raised, Cale Sanderson. We'll look forward to more great things from him. Yeah, let's talk about the fishbowl. You know, people are riveted to your match. My comment was that you get maximum effect out of minimum means. How do you feel with so many people, not just in America, but really outside of America, watching you now? Uh, it's, it's kind of cool. I mean, but it doesn't change, you know, what my goals. It doesn't change what I'm trying to do. So I'm just trying to wrestle my best every time. And I'll leave it at that. If you had to put a cap on Kale Sanderson right now, and the way you see yourself, and the way you feel about your wrestling, what would you say? I need some work. <laughs> that sums it up right there. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Wrestling. America's most right. Kerry McCoy in the red, Tolly Thompson in the blue. McCoy got one point of the clinch between the first two periods because there was no scoring then, and now... You've got to have three points to uh, complete the match. They're in the clinch. Someone slipped off there. Something happened. And the referee on the mat says one point for Tolly Thompson. It was Kerry McCoy whose grip slipped off. This is where the rules are. It's really tough to tell what happens here. It's very ambiguous. Uh, you know, who slipped off first and, and uh, who gets the points here. Right now it looks like they're trying to, uh, to allow a point for Thompson. Well, while the referees look at the video replay, we'll look at our own. It looks like McCoy slips up top first, which, according to the rules, you can't slip up above the shoulders, and if you do, then your opponent picks up a point. And there you see Rick Tucci, Bill Steckline, Gordon Connell, the videographer, uh, pretty scorekeeper. Gordon Connell out of Chattanooga, Tennessee, and, of course, Rick Tucci and Bill Steckline, that's the best we have here in the United States and two of the best in the whole world. That's right. They're highly respected among the international community. They're going to stop this match, double check, replay what they need to replay, almost like an NFL game, and get it right before they get going. So I respect that tremendously. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's a, a, a step in the right direction because you. bottom line is you, you know, the film, the tape doesn't lie. And so we see exactly what, gets, what happens, and the right person gets the points. And uh, what we see here is McCoy picks up another point. You know, and as a result, too, the rhubarb in and around the area, it's quiet because they know they've reviewed it and made an appropriate call. Yeah, that's right. No, no guesswork involved. All the hard work these guys are doing is, uh, you know, fairly being determined. McCoy back in that patented low-level single, or uh, that uh, ankle lace there. A little back kick there by Tolly Thompson. He got a little frustrated and wanted his leg away. Thompson's had a good job of avoiding that lace. You know, that's one of McCoy's strengths there is getting a lace and getting his opponents rolled through two of their back, and he has not been able to get it done. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that Tolly Thompson's going to make a tremendous effort to get to the leg of Kerry McCoy here before the end of the match. He's got great leg attacks. Now he's behind 2-0. He's being forced into being offensive. Good deed, good deed, good oh, and there's Strobel telling uh, Greg Strobel, Olympic coach from the year 2000, uh, not he's telling Kerry McCoy, don't let Tolly Thompson even get his lock started. It's going to be tough to turn him here. Again, the sweat factor. These guys are slippery. And uh, so to go up around the chest like this and to try to turn McCoy, it's going to be a very difficult task. And to keep the action going, Mark Manning shouting encouragement to Tolly Thompson. 
it's only 2-0. Uh, a takedown here by Thompson really pick up the uh, possibility of him coming back against McCoy. And I, I know he's capable of it. We've seen him through the years, you know, display great talent with leg attacks. Of course, Curry McCoy is not just your average heavyweight. And, and now conditioning becomes a factor here right now. I don't know if Polly Thompson's been out there nearly as much throughout the course of the year as Kerry McCoy has, but fatigue and conditioning is very much of a factor along That's with right. sweat. And Thompson's got to generate some offense here. He's, it's 2-0, down in a minute and a half, less than a minute and a half. He's got to get something going here. It's going to be tough. McCoy's in the driver's seat because he knows he doesn't have to take any risk. A minute 17 left here in this overtime period. 2-0 in favor of Kerry McCoy. You're looking at him. He's been he's been tagged for passivity. And he's got to go down now. And Thompson again is going to try to uh, find a way to expose his shoulders to the back. That shoulders, his shoulders to the mat, and that would really help him come back in this match. I'll tell you what. It's interesting. I would think that uh, the best strategy here is not to put your opponent down on the mat. Because it's so slippery down there that, you know, why not take feet? Okay, so see, now that's the, the, another rule comes into effect. Two consecutive passivities result in a clinch. But uh, I think it's also going to result in another point for Kerry McCoy. He's got the three points he needs to win his U.S. National Wrestling Championship here in Las Vegas. McCoy getting it done. Looks sharp. 3-0. Thompson could not score on him. You know, let's take a look at the replay of the clinch. Looks like uh, Thompson really had to try to get something going here. Tried to throw. Slipped it off. McCoy covers over. Goes to the butt. Spins behind. And picks up the point for the win. And uh, you see Kerry McCoy's hand going up. And we are going to go to Van Stokes, who is with Kerry McCoy right now. Kerry McCoy, 120 kilo national champion. Kerry, a little difficult for you out there today, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Well, every match is difficult, and Tyler's a great competitor, and I give him a lot of credit because he's really helped me to get to that level because I knew that he was there, you know, one of the guys that I had to beat if I wanted to be the best, and uh, he gives me everything he has, and I was just real fortunate that I was able to come out on top tonight. What did Tyler do that seemed to frustrate you the most out there? Well, I don't necessarily know if it was frustration, but he did a real good job of defending my offense, did a good job of defending me on the mat. You know, he's made a lot of improvements in the last couple of years. And, you know, he's just one, one of the top guys. And it really helps me to, to prepare for him because if I can beat a guy like that, then I know I can do well in the World Championship. Well, Kerry McCoy, congratulations on a national team title. Looking forward to good things out of him. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, we've had a lot of activity on the match here in Las Vegas today. Seen a lot of action. Seen a lot of stars. Seen a lot of new people. Some solid people like Joe Williams, Kale Sanderson. A lot of good days are ahead for wrestling in the United States. Larry, back to you. Well, thanks, Ben. Great work. And, Kendall, what are your final thoughts about today's competition? Well, I think we saw some great wrestling from some great athletes. However, I think these athletes, their dreams are tears away, and they lie in Athens, Greece. What I think is going to happen is that this will set the stage. This is part of the process for these gentlemen to try to make that 2004 Olympic team. Well said. We wish we could have shown you all the matches wrestled tonight, but time did not allow. But here are your U.S. National Wrestling Champions. In freestyle at 121 pounds, Teague Moore. 132 pounds, Eric Guerrero. 145 pounds, Bill Zadig. 163, Joe Williams. 185 pounds, Cale Sanderson. 211 pounds, Tim Hartung. Heavyweight, Kerry McCoy. In Greco-Roman, at 121 pounds, your champion, Brandon Paulson, 132 pounds, Glenn Naratka, 145 pounds, Kevin Bracken, 163 pounds, Keith Siraki, 185 pounds, Ethan Bosch, 211 pounds, Garrett Lowney, heavyweight in the Greco division, your champion, Dramiel Byers. And with that said, I think it's a wrap. We got some great competition in. I hope you enjoyed it. For Van Stokes, for Kendall Cross, for our entire broadcast crew, I'm Larry Nugent. Thanks for being with us. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com.